Hey guys, Kayak DIY here, and today I am working on my sailboat. And I only paid $250. So this is a 22 foot Helson 22 with a cabin. And uh, I had to show it to you guys because it was, it was crazy. I could not believe I got this deal. So I only paid $250 for a 22 foot cabin cruising sailboat with a trailer. The mast is right there. It survived Hurricane Irma, so I actually had it at my house during Hurricane Irma. And I had it uh, strapped in between the two trees here. And then I filled the inner water area um, to make it heavier. But I'm working on the sailboat right now and my goals for it are to be able to have it for like several day camping trips to visit some islands in the Gulf. So I'm gonna have solar panels up top here, which I already have, and I got a heck of a deal. Um, I don't tell a people a whole lot of my deals sometimes, but I'll share it with you guys. So one of the things right now that, one of the ways I get really good deals is not necessarily because I have a big channel, but I joined a Facebook group, which was for people that review Amazon products. And I found 100 watt solar panels with a charge controller for like 34 bucks. And all I had to do was agree to review the product. And I did. So I ended up getting a $34 solar charger and a 100 watt solar panel. Mind you, that solar panel actually costs 150 some dollars. So it's a really good deal. And because it had a slight cosmetic flaw and I made the, the manufacturer aware of it, they sent me another one. So I have 200 watts of solar power for this, which brings my total cost on the sailboat to about $284. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, I'll kind of show you what I'm doing right now with it. Um, there's leaves all over it right now because I'm under my large mango tree. I'm using that for shade when I'm working here because the Florida sun is brutal. Um, I'm doing some fiberglass work here, right here. There was a cutout for a gas tank, but the problem was it allowed water to get into the inside um, cabin area, which kind of stinks. So I ended up, I, I don't really know a lot about fiberglass, so I kind of just figured it out. I ended up picking up just a Bondo fiberglass kit. So it's not Bondo putty, it's Bondo fiberglass. And they had the cloth, um, which this is kind of like the cloth material just woven and then they had the resin and I just had to mix it and I ended up putting uh, I actually just put cardboard in this space that was cut out to create a little bit of a frame and then I just laid the, the fiberglass over it doesn't look beautiful it looks okay it blends in somewhat not bad for I think my first fiberglass job I'll get better but um, picked up a sander so I'm using that to blend the edges and then I'll end up painting this. There's seat cushions here and here that actually came with the boat, which is awesome. I had to replace the winch. So the winch was locked up. The winch runs the keel. So the keel is in the center of the sailboat and it drops down. What's nice about that is where I live, uh, I have a canal system. There we go, we're back online. But you'll get into some shallow area. To the trailer and then I had to actually uh, fill up the sailboat inner ballast area with water to make it heavier and then I actually cable tied it in between the trees there we go now we'll be able to get into the cabin so Here's a gas tank that someone left um, for an outboard. The area I'm stepping through is actually a spot for an outboard. There's a rudder here that I'm gonna end up redoing. Um, so I'm gonna end up just cutting out panels and I'll probably fiberglass and I'll replace the wood that's there. But I can use the wood as a template. So the inside is not really finished at all. Um, but it has potential. There's a lot of rainwater in here because it hasn't been open since hur the hurricane. 
so I have to uh, pump it out now. But in the front there is the V-berth, so that is basically the area where you can sleep. Right here is where the head area was, like the toilet. Um, I don't know that I'm going to go with a crazy complex toilet system. Um, just depends. We'll see. Um, we're going to have right here is where, kind of like in campers, you see that there's a table. And then the table can drop down into the floor. That's the area right here that we'll be seeing. And then on this side, I might just make a really long bench. Um, I don't know. I, uh, for the most part, right here originally, I think was a cooking area. I don't know that I'm going to have it be a cooking area because I'm going to primarily just be using a little camping stove, likely, for a while. Um, so I don't necessarily want to eat up all this space in here with a big camping area or with a big cooking kitchen area. Um, looking back this way, you're looking under the cockpit area. There's the new winch I put in. There's under the cockpit area again. So we're looking under these benches. So you got plenty of storage in here for a 22 footer. Um, this whole top canopy actually lifts up to give you headroom. So these poles here lock up into there and this whole canopy can lift up. So um, there originally was speakers right here and here. I ended up putting in clear hatches that create like a little window for light which is nice because it illuminates underneath here um, so I can see what I, where my storage stuff is. Um, there was a stereo here that's eventually going to come out. Um, probably going to have like a depth finder chart plotter there or something. Um, it's kind of an ambitious project but something I wanted to do on the side for fun. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, it was $250, so it gives me some opportunity to, to learn and, and toy around with it. Um, as far as sailing rigging, the boom is right there. The mast is right there. The mast I actually found, I was able, for the most part, to put it up on my own. It's so lightweight. Uh, there's just a bolt right there, and the mast locks in. And then they have what's called stays, which are cables that go to the corners of the sailboat, which help keep that mast in line and support it. So um, if you look down here, there's little cables that run off there. Those will lock into like right there, the lock into right there, the lock in there, and then the lock in the back right here. And that, that like helps support and stabilize the mast. And then you also have the compression kind of pole or whatever they call it, which is that wooden piece. It's directly below the mast and that helps support everything related to the mast. Um, yeah, winch here, winch here. And uh, this whole sailboat came with a mainsail, a jib, a spinnaker. Um, and actually I think it came with a second jib. So pretty cool. Oh, I gotta see if I can get into an area where I can see if there's any comments because it's so bright up there. But uh, yeah, that's a look at it kind of. And then the plan is I'll ha I ended up getting these davits for free. All I had to do was put new winches on them and <laughs> get someone to help me with removing them from a other person's seawall and putting them on mine. So what I'll do is I'll drop these winch cables down and I'll be able to just kind of keep that tethered in the water. Um, if I had really good attachment points on the sailboat, I could probably lift it or maybe use like a sling system, but uh, I haven't gotten that far yet. So at the moment, the davits might just be used to hold it in place. As you can see, there's bottom painting on there. So the black strips on sailboats and other boats that are in the water um, they have like copper infused bottom paint and as that copper makes contact with like algae or so it ends up killing off the, the algae and the, the growth. It's actually some of the same uh, technology I think in the bottom paint is what they use on uh, shingles for like your roofs so that you don't get algae growth. Um, 
let's see what else is kind of cool around the house here um, built this little uh, little kayak rack here basically got some four by fours and dug some holes and ended up putting in some quick concrete quick setting concrete so there's that there used to be some banana trees right behind there that provided some natural shading um, the neighbor decided he didn't want them anymore this is the kayak launch um, I did a video for this company and um, ended up working out a deal to try to get one because I really wanted one here so that when I have family coming and visit and people that are less stable um, with getting in and out of the kayak it really helps um, the whole ladder goes down with the cradle um, yeah so that's kind of the, some of the big things here at the house and uh, I'm just trying to share some of the stuff with you I'll go into the office area and I'll show you what that's looking like I can show you some of the solar panels and the deals I got and mind you I'm not necessarily getting these deals because I have a YouTube channel you could get some of these deals as well one of my friends also was able to get the deals um, we've been able to do pretty well with um, some of these Amazon review type sites and we've gotten like hundreds of dollars in product for like nothing so we'll go to the office here and I'll show you it's it's kind of a mess because I kind of this office this office was kind of a bedroom too but we don't have kids right now so it's kind of become my everything room <laughs> Wife and I made this pallet wall. Um, so I got my Mirage 180 drive sitting here. I got a bunch of camera supplies, spare drone parts. And oh, we're getting that bad connection again. Let's see if I can fix the bad connection here. Okay, come on. So here's a solar panel. I'll just take the solar panel with me. So apparently, going in the house right now, after this Hurricane Irma, our, our reception has been terrible. Are we back online yet? Okay, I see people now. Sorry guys. Okay, now I see people again. You guys probably missed a lot of that because of the bad connection. Ever since Hurricane Irma happened down here in Florida, our reception has been just absolutely terrible. Um, so anyway, what I was trying to show you was the office. I don't know if you got to see a lot of it, but I was going to show you some of the deals I got. So, you know, I got this sailboat here for $250. The reason why I'm able to fit it with stuff so affordably is because I became a like member of this Facebook group that allows me to review items and it's not necessarily because I have a big YouTube channel it's because I just review a lot of Amazon items so here is a hundred watt solar panel super thin it's like as thin as a quarter or less um, it has nice MC4 connection uh, points that are waterproof I got this with a charge controller box for $34 roughly and all I had to do was offer to review it so these are like Chinese companies that are trying to get on Amazon I think and then they want to have their product reviewed so that they show up better on Amazon I don't know so I didn't have a ton of money to work with for this project and I came across this for $34 just all I had to do was review it and consequently through a long process of saying there was some little cosmetic flaws such as when they shipped it there was a slight bend here 
I let the manufacturer know that and they sent me another one. So I have 200 watt of solar panels um, for this sailboat, which is actually quite a bit. So I'm not entirely sure where they're all gonna go. Um, but the plan is that I'll be able to use this to power the sailboat. And I'll end up throwing this on the deck so you can kind of see what my plan is. Okay, so I'm thinking probably having it right around here. And if I stand up on the front of the boat, that's kind of what it looks like. So it kind of seems like it fits there. Um, yeah, the mast will be here and then the boom will be going that way and you'll have the um, rigging such as the pulleys and the rope and stuff running to the back to run the boom so that the boom can swing this way or this way and it can propel us through the water. <clears throat> so that's kind of my latest project. I know it's not kayaking related, but it was just kind of something I'm working on. And I, I thought I'd share it with you because um, there's gonna be a lot of useful stuff here that I'm gonna be showing. So I'll be showing some of the process of me working on the fiberglass. I'll show some of the footage probably from when I was replacing the winch and I'll put it into a playlist um, so that that way if you're interested in other water related stuff you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, I got an inverter as well for this solar package so I'll be able to run household like plugs into it and I could have, I don't know, I mean like if I was having my friends kids along and we wanted to keep them entertained and they weren't like wanting to be out and about. You could have it plugged into a little TV or something. I mean, they, some of my friends have little kids. Um, so I could, I could have all that set up inside the hall. Um, that's kind of the sailboat at the moment. Uh, I'm trying to think of other stuff that I've been working on with the sailboat. My goal is to get it done here in the next like month or two because I have my parents coming to visit from Iowa and I want to have something fun for them to go out on because usually when they come here they just want to work and I kind of want them to not have to work. Um, so uh, as far as the house, this is a look at my house. I put a metal roof on uh, recently. That screen got blown out from the hurricane. This bush here blew out from the hurricane. I still got the shutters on the back just because of the crazy stuff that's been going on here. You can see on this side here, there's a roofing panel actually. Um, Home Depot quickly ran out of uh, plywood and so I ended up having to find other alternatives to put in front of my windows. So I found metal roofing panels. Um, one of them still got ripped out and ripped holes in the concrete. So I got to patch that up, but I still have a house. so. It's not that bad. Um, it could be a lot worse. <clears throat> Hurricane Harvey people, they got the major storm surge flooding. That's what uh, really hurt them. It would have hurt us because we're right here. But we lucked out and the, the hurricane went more inland and it missed us for the most part. It, uh, it, it, it didn't miss us. The eye kind of went right over this area, but we didn't get hit with the storm surge which would have been worse um let's see so that's kind of the water right now normally it's pretty clear and you can see down to the bottom but we're starting to get into the season where in the center of florida there's a big lake called lake okeechobee and the army corps of engineers kind of control it and what happened is they changed the, the natural water flow of the water going south through Florida into the Everglades. They did this a long time ago in order to, I think, create farmland. That's my understanding for the big sugar companies. Bad problem is they changed the water flow that was natural. And so when we get tons of water, it fills up Lake Okeechobee and then they kick it to the east and the west 
well all that fresh water then comes down the river and into our canal system and out into the gulf that can kill some of the saltwater uh, life so this here is technically brackish water which is a mixture of fresh water and salt water but it it's more salt water than it is uh, fresh water i don't see much fresh water fish in here it's pretty much all salt water fish we've even had dolphins that came in the backyard um, so when we get that much fresh water coming in from lake okeechobee it just wreaks havoc it makes the water where it's really it has a lot of tannins it's like a kind of a, a brownish goldish color water it makes it kind of murky and consequently then they say that some of the grass beds and stuff die so it's kind of a constant seasonal issue that people on the east and west coast are fighting with um, the representatives of florida over because um, it affects tourism all that stuff it affects the fishing industry so you just have to go further offshore in order to get to the fish um, so yeah we're still very happy here we, we love this home. Uh, we're in Cape Coral, Florida. Cape Coral is uh, like the diamond in the rough, in my opinion, for waterfront properties, because I still got student debt from college, but we're able to make this happen because they have so much waterfront property. It's actually pretty affordable. Yes, you have to deal with hurricanes and that sucks. But anyway, um, I'll try to comment to those that, uh, that sent me comments I'll try to reply because uh, I haven't been able to see them too well due to the Sun here but uh, that's a look at the sailboat and I'll try to end up creating a playlist around the projects that I do on that and kind of keep them separate from the rest of the kayaking stuff to keep the uh, page or channel organized but hopefully you like this and uh, if you have any more comments just feel free to comment below um, if you have anything you want to see or things that you have that might be good ideas for the sailboat let me know because i'm still new to this so if you have any tips or anything i'd love to hear them uh, i don't claim to know everything i know a lot about kayaks this is kind of a new one so Oh yeah, I'll uh, I can show you that uh, kayak rack. Yep, I can I can show you that deal. It actually survived the hurricane, so you technically could say it's hurricane proof. Yeah, I can definitely get you some information on that. So, anyway, I will uh, comment and reply to all of your your posts, and and even after the live video, if you guys comment and have questions, I'll gladly help you guys out. And uh, I look forward to getting some insight from you guys because, like I said, this is totally new to me. It's just something I've always wanted to do. It's kind of a bucket list deal. And so I, at $250, I was just going to do it. So anyway, take care. Hey, thanks, Matthew. We'll see you.